Starting in Alpha 3.23, Star Citizen will essentially physicalize everything you can interact with. Unfortunately, that won't be happening initially. With the feature being pushed back to 3.23.x in the future, one of the biggest features on the update will not be available when the patch first goes live. And we'll talk about that today. But when this physicalization does happen, every gun, armor piece, medical tool, shipping supply, ship, and stuffed animal will require you to physically summon, retrieve, and move them in order to use them. There will be no magical bag of holding, and all commodities will require some level of manual labor, unless the space station does it for you. It's monumental. While we have not reached the final goal for Star Citizen's cargo system, with the newest updates to hangars, freight elevators, item banks, and the cargo refactor overall, this update sees the culmination of three years of updates dating back to the first true inventory in Alpha 315. But there's a lot to consider in this system, and cargo hauling as a whole in the game. So if you want to be a hauler, run some courier missions, or you're actually terrified about how much this could drag down your more casual, less cargo-focused experience, Sit back and enjoy, because this is Cargo Hauling Explained. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. This video was actually ready to go seven days ago, but with sudden changes happening often with CIG, me and many of you watching this are probably not very surprised that at least something did get delayed. It does mean I need to remove the video that's already been released to supporters to re-edit, but it also means broken features won't ruin the initial 323 experience. Freight elevators, item banks, instanced hangars, and cargo missions have all been delayed to 323.x, due to their continued instability and complexity, leading the team to hold off and solve more edge cases before launching. I appreciate this as something that needs to be done, especially for a patch like 323 where many players are returning and hoping for a more polished experience, and the fact that CIG seems to be trying to sell a more polished experience. But we've also known how complex these features are, as we've seen them delayed almost as much as salvaging at this point. So I wish these had just been stated as coming later than 323.0 initially anyways, but here we are. It must be done, but it's a big hit to the initial update. That being said, the update is still very satisfying when the servers aren't crashing. We'll talk about that in a few days. CIG also still has time before their half one of 2024 deadline for this comes, and what aims to be delivered in this cargo hauling experience is still true. So let's jump into how cargo hauling is going to actually be changing in Star Citizen, hopefully in the next couple of months. Currently, the only way Star Citizen players can feel like true cargo haulers is putting their own money down on commodities that exist in a rather boring static economy, without crafting or base building. No missions, no contracts, and no way of simply space trucking. You gotta be a trader. The only cargo-focused missions we have are box deliveries, small single-task objectives of picking up a box and taking it somewhere else. This is great for learning locations and how to fly, but they don't earn good money. They aren't narratively satisfying, and oftentimes, they're just broken. This is mainly the way it's been since 3.0 back in 2017. For those of you who watch this channel regularly, maybe you should start a counter of how many times I've said that this year. Because just like all those other features have shown, this system is being replaced. First, the Interstellar Transport Guild will be added as the overseeing authority on cargo hauling and courier work in civilized space. This guild will be visible all throughout human space as the game expands. In the Stanton system specifically, we'll also see the full realization of several of the Stanton system main local and large hauling companies. Some we already know, but only as a location name or a sender of a contract. One of the biggest changes to hauling in 323 and in the game over the last year is the renewed focus on reputation in Star Citizen. Factions will now react to you based on your long-term reputation with them, but also all these shipping companies will track your reputation and relationship with them. Of course, this may unlock new trade routes, higher paying missions, and better rewards for you. You'll see exclusive clothing items, hangar and apartment decorations, ship skins, and access to more items in shops as well as discounts. Note these will be rewards that can only be earned in game, but this cargo hauling progression through reputation also formally introduces something that's only been toyed with in Star Citizen so far. Hazardous materials. The cold and hot weather in the game can affect your player and a few unique cargo types have been added throughout the years. But now, companies will start to require a more specialized understanding of cargo and how it's transported. 
This means more quantum travel restricted deliveries, more time sensitive deliveries, cargo that's fragile or degrades in atmospheric or pressurized conditions. Some cargo may be temperature sensitive and need to be powered. Radioactivity is a new property being introduced sometime after 323 as well. As we've seen over the last year, large cargo is also a thing, which means you may need specialized equipment to move it. There will be a higher diversity in value versus size, making smaller ships more useful for certain jobs. And of course, some cargo changes legal status across borders, which you may need to be wary of. All of this is part of the ongoing overhaul to the Star Citizen cargo mission system, the formal, more prepared, and less economically demanding way to play. But there is much more to this overhaul than just the missions. Essentially, anytime you aren't in a mission, you're playing in what many may call the sandbox. With no objectives, you're free to do what you want, move where you want, and act how you want. The new cargo updates manifest themselves in this system in two ways, freight elevators and item kiosks. These two locations are now your physical access to anything you own. Any weapon, armor piece, ammo magazine, component, etc. will either be retrieved from an item bank conveniently placed somewhere in the city or your own hangar at the spaceport or landing pad. Just like with the looting screen, this change is pulling players from the legacy inventory screen more and more until eventually it may not be needed at all. And eventually, any item as long as it is physicalized will snap to all cargo grids for easy transportation as well, since with no magical inventory, players will need a way to safely and securely transport loose items. And this isn't just on ships and in cities, the freight elevators will also show up at outposts and other locations with shipping needs. And on ships, there will be no more universal inventory that you access as soon as you board. You'll now need to actually find a storage area to deposit items. Overall, this change means you'll be walking to a nearby physical location to do stuff a lot more, rather than just taking a step into a new room to access your collection. Unfortunately, there are a couple of caveats regarding these new features. Only your main home hangar is going to be persistent for now, and account-bound item recovery will not be available during this initial 3.23 release. While vehicles can't be spawned via freight elevators yet, you can spawn them in your ship hangars now and then move them into your ships. And for the first time, you'll now have an actual home at your home city where you can invite friends, store goods, and customize your various loadouts and supplies. These new hangars will also spawn your ship in on an elevator to make more sense of the ship retrieval process. These persistent hangars and freight elevators are the beginning of true logistics gameplay in Star Citizen. A place you'll eventually stockpile minerals based on whether or not you need them right now or want to wait till the market improves. A place where you can change the components out of all your ships and figure out what the best combination is without having to get into a UI menu. These changes have been a long time coming and it's taken many new parts to arrive. The tractor beam from 3.12, specialized cargo from 3.13, the very first personal inventory in 3.7, and more recently physical boxes, cargo grids, and inventory containers of the last year. They're arguably the biggest gameplay related changes in the Alpha 3.23 branch, and probably the biggest gameplay shift we've seen in the game as a whole. Let's look at how these changes will affect the gameplay of everybody else in Star Citizen. Every aspect of Star Citizen involves cargo or some type of item interaction involved in the overall system. This much is clear. Whether you're looting something in a battle and need to get it somewhere to sell, or you're mining in a cave and want to refine those minerals. Building a base, fighting a battle, racing in a rally, exploring the frontier, or even just testing some new equipment you just got. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you're likely going to have to carry something along with you. So what does the system look like for the casual player? The biggest place most players will be affected is in our own personal inventories. Players will need to get very comfortable going to actual physical entry points to divest themselves of loot and other things they've collected. No more grabbing something from the city while floating overhead, or exchanging items with your city inventory from inside your ship hangar. No more selling cargo straight from your ship as soon as you land, or spawning something from the station inventory because you forgot it. In fact, with more crucial items like components, fuses, fire extinguishers, weapons, and even medical supplies to consider, where you store your items on ships will be much more important for the larger vessels. This is a change that won't affect most normal players near as much as dedicated movers, but it is going to drastically switch up how you go about the little things. Then there's the economic impact. 
The overarching effect this has on the game's economy is slow, but major. At no point in Star Citizen's history have prices for goods made sense. And without crafting, base building, or any other major resource sinks, there hasn't been much reason to trade besides money. Cargo hauling is the backbone of the Star Citizen universe. It's the beating heart that drives everything. From material flow, to the common points in the game, to the probabilities that determine whether you run into pirates or security. It's all driven by commerce. In anticipation of this major update, the economy team was broken out from the systemic services and tools team last year, and for the last year, has started to analyze and balance the baseline prices of all goods in the game. This has been ongoing for ships, their parts, weapons, commodities, components, mission payouts, salvage spawn rates, and ammo cost. Realistic and instigative pricing on these items will allow the game to provide better cargo hauling missions, but it also means regular players can benefit from more strategic looting and selling, especially when Pyro comes online. For the first time ever, players have a home in Star Citizen, a permanent private location where you can store your goods, invite your friends, and manage your cargo. For the first time ever, Star Citizen is tightening its economic, reputational, and functional aspects to support what is essentially the backbone of the whole game, proper cargo hauling. Unfortunately, this will all be happening at a later date than we expected. Likely in 3.23.2 or .3, sometime after Invictus Week and Alien Week in June. When that finally does happen though, we'll be testing the initial feature releases in this system and learning more about how this gameplay will progress going forward. And as always, I'll be here in these videos, in my much more detailed live deep dives on this channel, and over on the second channel chatting in our podcast about how this is all going, and what's coming next. I hope you'll join me in one of these spots or over on our new gameplay channel where I just uploaded a recent play session with Morphologist. Whatever you decide to do, thank you for watching this video, I hope you learned something new in this one, and I'll catch you in the next.